live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon CloudNativeCon Europe 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and Ecosystem Partners. Welcome back, this is theCUBE's live coverage of KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2019 here in Barcelona, Spain. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host is Corey Quinn. Happy to welcome to the program two first-time guests, a company we've had on the program, Reduxio, uh, but some changes have been going on, as have been in the industry. Sitting to my right is Ori Bendori, who is the CEO of the company. Sitting to his right is Jacob Cherian, who is the CMO and Vice President of Product. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, one of the things I, you know, I've really enjoyed at this conference is it is a global conference. You know, the CNCF puts on three pieces of it, but this one definitely has a very European flavor. Uh, you, you gentlemen are coming to us from Israel. Uh, so, uh, you know, Ori, or, let's start with you. Just give us the, the, the update, you know, kind of the quick, the, the who and the why and the what of uh, Reduxio. Okay. Um, so we are uh, a storage and data management company, and uh, where we are aiming is having Kubernetes native, containers native, cloud native solution. Uh, we have some unique, unique capabilities, and actually we are getting ourselves to the public this exhibition, so it's very important for us. We've been developing it for the last year, so this is the first time we announce that we have a new product that is container native, uh, headed to clouds, and very unique. Yeah. So, Jacob, we actually had, uh, had an analyst on earlier, and he said uh, the th thing about this space is, you know, we're, we're talking it's, it's stateless, it's trustless, it's codeless. Um, that doesn't mean I can't deal with those environments. Uh, they all have some challenges when you talk about storage. I mean, those of us that know storage, is, yep. you know, it's a complicated thing. I, I love the uh, presentation this morning in the keynote was, it's turtles all the way down. There's a lot of complexity yep. uh, inside storage and that doesn't go away and sometimes we're trying to make this world no less complicated than storage would be outside of it, as I guess an industry thing. How, how is Reduxio helping to solve that? So, um, you know, yes, customers move applications from traditional infrastructures to storage uh, to containerized infrastructure. I think the expectation is that these customers would expect the same capability that they had with the existing um, storage systems in their container native storage, right? Because why would a customer move their applications to an environment that's less capable. And our focus is to deliver storage that is enterprise grade, where customers feel comfortable for moving the business critical applications from the traditional environments into a container environment. You mentioned a few minutes ago that this is a, that you have something very unique that's, um, that you've been working on for a year and are now deploying into the marketplace. In your conversations with customers, what unmet need did you wind up seeing? And I guess what differentiates you from other options people could go with? Thank you. Um, I think we're talking about three things, mm -hmm. the most important thing. The first one was, which Jacob was describing is we are enterprise grade. We have the full set of data management and storage capability, which we believe some of our customers do not have. We believe containers are moving to production, to real serious enterprise application. You need this kind of uh, capabilities, and we have it. The other two are very unique. The first one, we are microservice based. Uh, we believe the first wave of solution for containers native was built on just putting stuff inside a container instead of virtual machine. We think you need to go all the way. We took our technology and we put it in microservices. This brings us a huge advantage in multiple areas uh, where if you think about it, it's one of the reasons people went and adopted uh, containers is all this capability they bring. When you're not implementing the microservices, you're actually losing a lot of these values. The third one is a unique capability, which is our unique IP as well is what we call data mobility or application mobility. We believe containers, one of the major things people are looking is mobility. They want to move their stuff between on-prem to the public cloud. They want to move from one public cloud provider to another. They want to do it quickly. You can do it with containers and with Kubernetes. You cannot move the data. If you move your application from on-prem to the public cloud, Data is not with you because storage is not with you. We make it different. What we are offering is this unique IP. When you move the application, by the way, 
Everything is application based in our solution. When you move it, we are moving the kind of metadata we need, which takes a minute or two, and you can start working immediately in the new location. We'll make sure everything happens in the new location. We will move your data in the background. By the way, we move the hot data first and the cold data later. We believe that make, makes a big difference for hybrid solutions. If you want to run multiple clouds, both on-prem and public, you would like to have the ability to move stuff quickly. It cannot be that you move the application and a week later the data arrived. It just doesn't work. Yeah, there, there are very definitely latency uh, considerations in there. Uh, when you're doing this, do you find that it's, you're presenting this as file, block, object, or does it not matter given that your application yes. does? So the solution we provide today provides uh, persistent volumes in Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So it's container native, it actually uses a CSI plugin to basically deliver persistent volumes to pods that run within Kubernetes. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah, so Jacob, when I talk to say, you know, storage companies today, there are your traditional storage companies, and they're all, you know, we're moving towards cloud native, yeah, microservices, we're all in on that stuff. We've seen a resistance in the enterprise to, you know, how developer models are going to go in there, how they're going to yep. modernize, and then I've got, you know, cloud native people that, you know, we're just, you know, we're built for multi-cloud and we're do this. Where, where do you fit, you know, what, what, what's the industry getting right and what, what does differentiate? You, yeah, so, you know, I think uh, let's define container native first, right? I think that's important because everybody says that they're cloud native. If you have a CSI plugin, people claim, and people are cloud native because you can attach into Kubernetes. But I think container native has unique value because once you move to Kubernetes, you truly are building a cloud environment where you want all your work, everything to be running inside that Kubernetes cluster. This is really realization of ITS code, right? Where Infrastructure is shared, physical resources are shared, and your networking, your applications, and storage are just services that run on top of your physical infrastructure. And for us to, you know, when we look at container native, the important attribute for container native is that it runs within Kubernetes, it's implemented as containers, and it is orchestrated and scales with Kubernetes. It should not be something that's separate. All right, so Ori, you've been in the industry for a while. Yes. The storage people, eh, they buy on risk. It's like all this cool new stuff, it's all nice and everything, but it needs to be trusted. You know, while they're interested and they're trying new things, and sure, they're going to get Kubernetes in production in the next six months, you know, why Reduxio, how can they be trusted in this space? So I think it's a bit talking about a go-to-market and what we're doing. So we've been engaging the customers, uh, I mean, from day one, um, and uh, we're going to do a POC uh, in the coming months with I don't know how many of them. And I think we learned where the use cases make sense, okay? So the good news for us is that the market is moving forward as of containers. We don't have, you know, like financial institutions. Many of them decided strategically they're moving there. They're going to containers. They're probably not going to do everything on containers, but new stuff will go to containers. So those people, I don't have to convince them. When they look around, there's not much. If you want to have a storage that is container native, there's not a lot. By the way, most of it is coming from startups, if not all of it right now. And they're saying, you know, we went all the way, now we go back and, and have an external storage. It just doesn't make sense. So those people, anyway, it is a bit new. I'm not fighting for the application they have since the 90s, okay? I don't think they will move many of those into containers, but there is enough that is moving to containers. The other one I think that is important is the use case which are very natural to containers. People already adopt them. I'll name two of them. One is CI-CD. People are using it to move stuff anyway. They want to have on a public cloud, on a private cloud, they're using Jenkins in many cases. We deliver into Jenkins you know, a solution that is so natural and so valuable to them. It's al almost no brainer. And by the way, it is CI CD, so it fails. So we restarted, right? It's not a production data at this stage. And if it works, by the way, you know, half a year from now, they'll put us in other places. The other way, the other things around is Hadoop. Anything to do with data processing, a lot of those people are moving into containers anyway. And in a way, we are riding with them. They're looking for a solution that will simplify the way they put the, the you know, they the construct their stuff. 
They want to move easily and have the, 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 the kind of mobility we talked about. And in a way, they're willing to take the risk. And by the way, none of the current incumbents provide them any of this solution, which is the benefit of the small guys. Okay. So Jacob, what, what's the rollout of, uh, of, of this new offering? Yeah, so we've, uh, what we've announced at KubeCon is that we've started customer evaluations. Uh, we expect to start POCs uh, in about three months. Uh, so from evaluation POC, it's about three months, and product will be available for production by fall of this year. All right, so Ori, want to give you the final word. Uh, you know, where should people be looking for Reduxio, and what should we expect for the company uh, throughout the year? I think in the end of the day, you know, I'm trying to be modest, but I won't. We believe we are in a way the future of storage. Not because we're that smart, because it makes a lot of sense, because it's, this is the way the public cloud guys are building their stuff. It has, to be con it has to be cloud native, it has to be container native, because that is where the IT is moving to. So in a way, we're saying in the end of the day, storage need to behave like everybody else. It cannot be the exception. Storage has to be part of the containers ecosystem. We represent yet another, you know, the first one, maybe not the first one, there will be others. We're not going to be alone, but we believe the direction we're taking is the direction the storage industry will take. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ori and Jacob, thanks so much for Thank sharing you. everything. Thank you. We, we, Thank we, you. we know uh, there's always the next new thing. It's going to make everything nice and easy. Some hard work to make sure that storage works right in you all bet. of these new environments. So you bet. we look forward to tracking everything. All right. For Corey Quinn, I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be back with more coverage here from KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019. Thanks for watching theCUBE.